we've established that the essence of maths is about thinking and being like a mathematician, how a mathematician makes sense of things. This is most strongly emphasised in the proficiencies which describe how the students need to engage with the content. When we think about designing learning in maths, traditionally we focused more on the development of students' content knowledge, not on the development of how the students work with content. The proficiencies have really raised the profile of the need to focus on the process, the how of the learning, not just on the content, the what of the learning. For many of us, designing learning that intentionally focuses on how as well as what will represent a shift in our maths practice. The Bringing It to Life tool, the BITL, has been designed to support teachers to be intentional about working with the proficiencies, to make them visible and doable. The proficiencies are not developed separately, they overlap, they naturally intertwine with each other. But in order to intertwine the proficiencies effectively, it's helpful to understand the emphasis of each one of the proficiencies. If we don't have an appreciation of what, say, fluency is, how can we intentionally plan to develop it? And how can we reflect on the, our teaching and the learning experiences that we provide for our students in relation to that proficiency? The 13 BITL questions have been designed to help teachers to develop an understanding of the emphasis of each proficiency. The questions are consistent across foundation to year 10, but they're elaborated in subsequent layers to show increasing complexity and sophistication. If we look at the um, Bringing It to Life tool now on the resource, we can see the 13 questions consist of two fluency questions, three understandings questions, four reasoning questions, and four problem solving questions. The problem solving questions differ from the questions in the other proficiencies because there's a logical order to them, but there's no particular order to the questions in the other proficiencies. The problem solving questions flow from interpreting the question through modeling and planning to solving and checking and then reflecting on the problem. We know that strong problem solvers invest time in these first two stages of the process, so we need to support all of our students to understand and engage with this part of problem solving. Of course, it's often helpful to move back and forth between the different stages of problem solving. So, for example, you might be modelling your problem and find that it will be helpful to go back and check out the initial interpretation of the problem. When we designed the questions in the proficiencies, we looked at the verbs that were used to describe that proficiency and then we posed questions that would activate those verbs. On the screen you can see a mapping of the um, proficiencies against the bringing it to life questions. If you'd like to look at this in more detail, this mapping of the questions against the proficiencies can be printed out and you'll find this in the um, Bittle print section. The second layer of the Bittle tool is a drop-down box that elaborates on what the Bittle questions mean at each year level group. When we click on Dig Deeper, we see the third layer, and this layer's got two parts. The first part is a set of pedagogical questions that we can use when we're designing learning or we can use in direct questioning of our students. These questions are just a sample of possible question structures that we can use to activate particular actions in our students. They're not an exhaustive set of questions. The second part of this layer contains a, set, a selection of examples that show what the pedagogical questions look like when we bring them together with age-appropriate content. When teachers first start to use the BITL to help them to think about different ways that a piece of content could be explored. Many of them have found it easiest to start with the understandings questions. So that's the what patterns, connections and relationships can you see, can you answer backwards questions and can you represent, calculate, create in different ways. And then the teachers look for connections across the other proficiency questions. So for example, a teacher of year seven students was thinking about designing a backwards question for the topic of plans and elevations in shape. The question that she designed was if the plan view of my shape is a square what might the shape be? What might the 3D shape be? 
So the teacher realised that for some of her students, this would become a problem solving question and the Bittle placemats containing the problem solving questions could be used to support those students to think about the problem. The teacher then looked across the other Bittle questions and realised that she could build on her initial idea by asking her students, is there another possibility? And how can you communicate your ideas? And can you convince somebody who thinks differently to you? This is just one example of connections that could be made across the proficiencies, but different connections could be made for different activities. A useful process is just to find a starting point and then look across the Bittle questions to see if there are other ways that this content can be explored and developed. And then also think about other content connections that can be made. We know that working through the proficiencies helps us to develop powerful learners and users of maths. So we need to be intentional about designing learning that embeds these proficiencies.